All right, everybody, we're going to do this, and we're going to cut it here and there, so it's going to be a little choppy. But a lot of people have asked for resin casting, or what is rotocasting, and how does it work. So we're going to do a brief little demonstration on rotocasting and how it works, and we're going to rotocast a piece, and we're going to speed it up. We're not going to make you watch the rotocaster for 15 minutes while it spins. <laughs> Um, yeah. but you're going to kind of see just the process of what goes into something sometimes, and it's not just a three minute thing. So what we're going to start out with is as many, of you know, many of, you know, I produced a large King Kong kit, which I cast the last two of for this last wonder fest for my friends, Brian Clark and Kenny Caruso. It has to be remolded. And in the process of that and looking at the masters, I realized I didn't have a left arm. So. I have to cast a left arm, and I will hopefully get one more cast out of these very old molds. And you will be able to see the last casting maybe come out of these molds. So these molds have a plaster shell, and that's so they don't get distorted when they're kind of mashed together. And these molds were originally made by Randy Guthrie. So my first step when I do this is I've got to spray some mold release in there. So we're going to spray some mold release, we're going to let that dry, and we're going to come back and we're going to go to the next steps. Okay, so we're going to speed this up a little bit. I know this is really exciting. Watch this. So let's spray it out of here. Boom. We're done for five minutes. We'll be back. Okay, we're back. So I've let the mold release dry. The next step is to put some talc in here. And I'm, I'm not cheap. A lot of people use baby powder and their pieces smell really good. I use this expensive talc. I've had good luck with it. What brand? What is uh, it? Uh, what is it? Pinod? <clears throat> it's like $6 a bottle at Sally Beauty. And what's funny is the amount you waste, but oh well. So I put some in a little Dixie cup. And I got a little fluffy brush. And what I'll do is I'll just... And you'll see it get in the fluffy brush. I'll take it and I'll kind of just kind of really generously brush it in here. And not always am I this generous, but because of this fur texture, you want to make sure you get it. You get it in there real good. Now, in the spirit of not wasting it, I will then take this half of the mold, put it over the top. I think that's right. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And I'll just give it one of these. <laughs> okay, when I do that, see how a lot of the powder yeah. went to the bottom? So now I'm not using as much to powder this. I do get some powder in these crevices. That maybe didn't that get still still smells pretty nice. Oh, yeah. It's probably horrible for you. I probably will get ovarian cancer or some shit. What? Well, I found out. But Well, I'll tell you that story later. Okay. So then I put this over here and spill powder everywhere. Okay, I'll give it one more little. Okay, now I take it over to the garbage can. I used to, when I was in the garage, I had a very low pressure, like, pool inflatable pump. Mm -hmm. And I would blow it out of here. But I don't want to do that in my basement, because trust me, my garage was covered with talc everywhere. So now I'll just kind of spank it. Naughty mold! Oh, you naughty mold! Take that, Jason, you bitch. Okay. <laughs> Edit that out. I'm not going to. <laughs> a worthling, you son of a gun. Uh, okay. <laughs> Inside joke. Anyway, so now we're ready to go to, to put this together to cast. Now, one more thing, because I have to remember, because... I forgot is this used to be a smaller plug but over time it's getting big I have to see how far I can put this plug in because this will be the plug what are you using for a plug the, it's hot glue there you go it's hot glue and I used to there's two ways you can do this when you're making a, a mold you can attach the hot glue to the piece and make your mold that way and cut it out I've actually used this. Does it have rubber in it? It does, because you can't see through it anymore. But I've actually used this, and it'll it's not perfect, but you just gotta turn and push, turn and push, and turn and push, 
and you get a nice round hole that you can stick one of these in and 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 plug your um plug your mold. And this is not gonna be a great plug, so I am gonna lose some resin. But the reason I'm doing this is and if I could get Jason to find my Sharpie that was over there. We've got it. Oh, this is Are a different one. Okay. That's my Sharpie. That's your Sharpie? I okay. got there is one I'll go grab it. And I'm just gonna make a mark on here. And this will show me um, where to, uh, how far to ins insert it. So tell me how far to put it in. So there we go. With you, I'm sure it's not going very far. It's going deep. Okay. So now I'll put my mold together. And I usually use littler rubber bands for this, but because these big ones are handy. Trouble is some of these are dry. I've been casting so long. I cannot tell you how many rubber bands I broke and smacked my fingers on uh, in the last few weeks. Question. Best place to get giant rubber bands like that? eBay. Otherwise, I can't tell you. So, <laughs> And as you can see, I still have some resin on here from before. I got to knock out. There you go. There you go. A little bit on the plaster. Sometimes it gets on the plaster. You got to... And I didn't make these molds. Sometimes guys make them with wood. And sometimes guys use foam board. I've done it all. I've had them all. I'm trying. Bear with me. Do you need to reinforce it specifically for roto casting a little more? or is Yes. It... Okay. Okay. And the reason being, if this was a gravity pour mold, I wouldn't have to do this. Apparently, I might not have to do it now. But, um... And the reason being is, you're going to see in a second, I have to strap this into the rotocaster. Okay, so in doing that, it the bungees are going to squish this a little more. Yeah. And the idea is you do not want to distort your molds right. more than you have to. Well, I think I can get three out of these. Let's see. I don't know. You, you, I cannot even begin to tell you how many times... I've snapped my fingers. And for speed's sake, I'm using these big rubber bands and overkill. That's overkill. So this, this is now ready to have resin poured in. So if you want to take a step over here to this mighty machine, this is a tabletop resin kit, a rotocaster. And what I like to do is, the nice thing about this one is, I can spin it. Let me get some of these bungees off of here. Okay. I can spin it to get it kind of where I want it to put the mold on. That's a nice these. Sure. Okay. Not, whatever you know, whatever is convenient for you. So now put that on there. Now I've got these eye bolts on here, and these are removable. If I kind of mold this a little bigger, I've had to remove them a few times. And I wish these were a little tighter, but. They do work. I've been using them for a week now. Did you build or buy this roto This one I bought. Bought from a gentleman in Pennsylvania. The heck was his name? He had a resin company, too. I remember he had a golden retriever named Odie that wanted to come home with me. <laughs> and... Um, So that is strapped in good enough. It's not going to go anywhere. Now, I, this is where I have to put the resin into. So obviously when it's this way, I can't, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is now to kind of spin this around. Yeah, that's not good. We're getting there, though. Getting closer. I think one more time is going to get it there. Perfect. Okay. So now... We're ready to put resin in here. So we'll be back. I'm going to get some resin ready. And you can watch this whole got to move like a madman mess. We'll be right back. Sorry, I was waiting for the ding. Okay, we're back. So we're going to mix up some resin now and pour it in that crazy contraption. And we're going to go from there. So I, I know that this is a four ounce pour. This... It's supposed to be done by volume. I do it by weight because the difference isn't that much. And it's also not that critical then if you get off a little bit. So 
As you can see, I've had this scale a long time. But I can still read it. So we're going to start out. We're going to turn it on. Okay. Now it starts out at zero. But once you put a cup on, obviously, you've got 0.2. So I hit what they call the tear button. And the tear button will send me back to zero. Okay. So now we're going to put some muscle into this. This is why these are here. Because sometimes the resin dries and doesn't want you to open easy. Watch me cut myself on a live, live model club TV. Okay, we're still teared at zero. And I'm going to pour. So do you have memorized how much you need for that piece? For this piece. I usually have it written down on a sheet, which I do have this, but okay. And because I was talking to Jason, I'm a 2.2, not a big deal. So that's 2.2 ounces. I purposely try to distract him. That's what he'll, he'll point. All right. So 2.2 ounces of part A. We're going to put that over there. Now we're going to do this. Part B. Same thing. So look, I'm at zero. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So let's get two more ounces. 2.2 actually, right? Is that what I said? Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough. You always end up. Don't ask me why. There we go. 2.2. Actually, it's a 2.4. Uh-oh. 2.4. Oh, you worried about that? Here. <laughs> oh, Mr. Perfect. Sometimes I've just done this and say, eh, close enough. Now, there's guys out there to cringe and shit like that. I don't know what to tell you. I've been pouring resin a long time. I've never had complaints about uncured resin and all that. You mean like that tucky kit you just got opened uh, up? Yeah. I think that was a case of too much mold release. Sorry, I'm going to put this over here. Now, this resin, if I mix it, will come out white. I don't like white resin. It's hard to see bubbles. It's hard for the builder to see anything. Okay. That I is like true. It. I like it to be a color. Now, they make colors. I can make this any color. And what's funny is when I did the Mike Parks trophy this year, I was half asleep, I guess, and I grabbed this one thinking it was the black. Well, this is the green. So the top half of the Mike Parks trophy this year was green. It's painted, so they'll never know, but it'll, I'll know. So this is the black. Now, obviously, I don't want my resin to be black, but when you mix black and white, what do you get, art teacher? Gray. You get gray. Okay. So you mix the color in the part B before you mix them together. Now, there's no real science to this other than this. How many ounces I have in here? 2.4. 2.4, huh? So I take this, and as it starts to squeeze, I count to two. One, two. Boom. That should be enough. I'll give it just a little more. One more drop. Okay. I go like a drop an ounce. Okay. That's all it, That's all I put in there. Now I'm going to take this spoon. See how the static pulls it to the sides, mm -hmm. too? I'm going to take this spoon, and I'm going to spin it up until I can tell it's well mixed. You can generally see by this that it's well mixed. You know, it, it you kind of scratch scrape the sides a little bit, but it's well mixed. Oh, let me see how black it is. Oh, it's black. Okay. Okay. So I'll explain what I'll be doing because I'm going to be doing it in a hurry. I will now dump part A into part B. And I will stir this up. And this has to be done quick because I have a three-minute life on this. I will then suck it into these syringes. Which, by the way, I should have remembered. Sprayed a little mold release on. So I'm going to suck it into these syringes. And then I'm going to shoot it into that hole in that model. And I'm going to put the plug in and turn this crazy machine out. So I keep the plug over here. Okay. Let's ready? hope my phone ring doesn't ring in these three minutes. <laughs> oh, that'll be yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna dump the A into the B. Okay, now this is the uh Scott Kelly says I taught him how to mix resin. Of course I have freaking so I'm gonna put a glove on real quick. Notice I'm working so fast now. 
because I got some of the black in here and I want it all over my hands. So now I'm going to mix it. I count when I mix. I know it's crazy, but I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now I go counterclockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's pretty well mixed. Now, when you're rotocasting, you got a little leeway because it's going to mix in there. I suck this stuff into this syringe. Stop it. Okay, yeah, it's going to drip a little. I suck the rest into this one. Are you watching? I'm going to get ready to go over the machine now. So I'm going to go over to the machine. There's the hole. Boom. Just like when you're a kid. Take that, you little bastard. Here's your shot. What do you mean, just like when you're a kid? Just shot. When you get a oh, shot, you go I'm real not, fast. Uh, okay. My mind went somewhere else. Of course, because you're a creep. <laughs> now, there's my mark on that plug. So I'm going to stick that plug in to there, to about that spot. Stand back and turn my thing on. And there it goes. We're going to set our timer for 13 minutes. And we'll be back. We're ready. See, Paul, this is how easy it is when you're not spinning your fucking hand. All right, our timer's going off. We will now cut the power. If you stuck your arm in there, would it stop it, or take your uh, arm off? I'm not sure. I did leave a bungee on my other one, and it did hold it for a while. But, but and my other one's a monster, so I don't know what would happen. So we're taking all the bungees off. We're coming over here, back to the work area. Okay, as you can see, we still have some leakage here with our... You always have leakage. <laughs> yeah, a little leakage, but that's normal. Especially as worn as this is. The key is you don't want resin flying all over. Okay. Now we're going to take these off. Now generally I use smaller rubber bands and I snip them off. But because these are harder to come by, I'll try to reuse them again. Check that out. You ready? Okay, so we'll take the plaster shells off. And start to take it apart. Here we go. Look at that. Aww. Now we're going to pop it out. And see, there's the hole where the glue stick was, but not a big deal. A little cleanup. But look, there's really not a lot of cleanup on this piece. This mold's still getting some arms out. But if you can get close enough, you'll see. It. There might be some pinholes, but not a lot. And that's the advantage to rotocasting a piece like this with a lot of fur or something with a lot of scales. So, there you go. Rotocasting. A half hour and probably ten minutes by the time you edit it. So, we're good to go. Feel that. What do you feel? It's nice and warm. Yeah, it's still warm. So. All right, I'm going to fist you. There you go. <gasps> Ugh, me, Mark Worsling. <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, um, gals, there's a quick little rotocasting demo. Thanks for watching. Watch Model Club TV. Like us. Love us. Subscribe to us. And we'll see you soon.